In a landmark decision by the Constitutional Court recently, the court found that the decision to attach Ganeshi orders onto workers' salaries can now only be made by court magistrates and no longer the clerks. The case, which sought to rectify a process often abused at the expense of poor and marginalized workers, was brought forward by the Stellenbosch Law Clinic and others. And joining us to discuss how rife the abuse of Ganeshi orders is in the country and uh, what this decision means for workers as well as employers, we are joined by the director of the South African Payroll Association, Nicolette Nicholson. Nicolette, pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for inviting us. It's our pleasure to be here. And I'm sort of familiar to some extent with the situation, but what was happening, particularly in the Western Cape when this matter was taken up with the courts, was that employees or workers would have up to 80% of their salaries uh, being debited via stop orders and workers were no longer taking any pay home as a result thereof. And I think the remedy that was being sought here was to try and control the amount of money that can be debited from someone else's account. What was the extent of the problem? I think um, when the, the, the case was brought to court, it highlighted how big the problem was in the rest of South Africa. That was not an isolated case. That is actually happening across the whole of the country. And from an employer's organization perspective, it's a big problem for payroll departments to manage the, the, the uh, emolument attachment orders or the garnishes as we know it, because people take home no salary. And that was a huge problem in South Africa. So there was no control of how much money could be debited from someone else's wages or salaries, right? The basic conditions of employment says that a maximum of 25% of personal deductions yes. can be deducted. Yes. But it did not specify how much of legal deductions, um, the capping of that. So uh, um, courts would issue the emolument attachment orders and people would go home with no money and payroll departments had no control over that because you're obliged to act on that garnishy order. Okay, and these orders would have been uh, made by the courts, right, but at luck level, not necessarily uh, at magistrate or a higher level within the hierarchy of the courts. I think that was the, 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 the essence of the problem is that uh, clerks of the courts were bribed and its allegations, but from a payroll perspective, we've seen it in practice. And when you challenge that garnishy order through the courts, you would then find, but that uh, judgment never went through court. And so it was at clerical level, they're yes. not even qualified to issue such an order. And that oh, so was in, what the problem was. In any event, was. those orders would have been illegal after all. Yes, in essence, but from the way the South African law works, we as payroll professionals had no other option but to accept because there was a stamp from the court on the order that made it legal. So when, following the Constitutional Court judgment, when did this situation change then? And uh, following the ruling, is this decision by the courts being implemented as we speak? Interestingly enough, we've seen a decline in issuing of garnishy orders since September month and it's been reported to um, the employment organizations that magistrates are reluctant to issue the garnishes because now they're obliged to do an assessment whether the employee can actually afford the, 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 the amount that is um, put on the garnishy order mm. or requested to be paid and whether that um, debt is legal or not. So magistrates find themselves now in a position that they will be held liable if they don't do proper investigation, so they now are reluctant to issue the garnish orders. Hence, we've seen a decline in issuing of garnish so orders. So the employers now, what should they take away from the uh, court ruling? What should they understand? I think the main thing that an employer needs to understand is that the jurisdiction where the garnish order are being issued has to be where the employee lives or works. So if you receive a garnish order and it is not in the jurisdiction or it has not been obtained in the jurisdiction where the employee works or lives, that he should then request that garnish order not to be delivered, but they should not refuse if, the, if, if it is being delivered at the workplace 
case, but they should challenge it through court and say that that is an illegal garnishy order and should not just implement the garnishy order. Who should order. challenge it? The employer? The employer, I think, has got a social responsibility towards the employee to assist the employee. Because like you said, it is the lower income employee that suffers. They not equipped with knowledge where to go to. So I do think it's a social responsibility from the employer and, to assist the employee. And the employees, what do they need to understand and know about this? I think the employees need to understand that they have got the right to challenge the debt in court, that they can, get, they have a voice and they can speak up and say that I firstly cannot afford it or this debt was obtained in a manner that they, I should not have been eligible to receive the debt because we know what the debt collectors uh, um, do. They source the loan shark's debt and it's been sold to the debt collectors and then they go after the employee. But the employee might not have been able to afford the loan that they got from the loan shark at high interest rates. Well, you know, now again, that, that sounds like a criminal thing that's been going on here because on one hand you've got the loan sharks, the micro lenders, pushing the debt to the unsuspecting poor earner, right? A low level employee probably earning a well, couple of thousand rands and so forth and being given loans they cannot afford in the first instance. And then you say the same loans would then be sold on to debt collectors who will force so strong arm the employees to pay back. Is that how it worked? Um, we call it prescribed debt. So let's say you've got debt that's older than three years. Mm and I've never contacted you to try and recover the debt. That debt then should be written off. So what people do or debt collectors do, they go and buy the books with the debt and then they try and then recover the debt because now the debt belongs to the debt collector. Mm. And it's unsuspected employees that when they receive the garnishy, they didn't challenge it through court, mm. um, that they then end up paying that debt through their payroll and they go home with literally nothing. So we as employers are very excited around the court ruling. But here's the point. What about historical debt then? Let's say, you know, you take home pay 40% of mm -hmm. your earnings and then um, somebody comes with a Ganeshi order that says this is an old debt. Mm -hmm. what, let, let me put it this way. Irrespective of what the Constitutional Court says, mm -hmm. what happens if additional burden is placed on you as an employee to pay? Mm -hmm. This uh, gonna shoot or the or sad is truth is that be prior 13 September, garnishy orders that's been obtained prior 13 September 2016 does not fall under the new rules or regulations, so that debt will stand. But I would advise employees to actually seek assistance and maybe go under debt review and then request that their debt is being managed by a, um, a debt review process to actually equip them to go home with more pay. Okay, as we conclude, give me takeaways from, from what I need to understand mm. here. From the employer's point of view, what do employers need to know? I think takeaway from this is employers need to understand that they have to inspect the garnishy order. They should not refuse a garnishy order, but rather um, take receipt of the garnishy order, assist the employee to actually challenge the garnishy order that's been obtained, check that the jurisdiction is the accurate jurisdiction on the garnishy order. And I also think that um, employers need to be mindful that they've got a social responsibility towards the employees. And from the employee point of view? Employee point of view is that you've got a voice now, and I think that excites me a lot. Um, you have the right to speak up, you have the right to challenge it in court, and that you should speak up and say, I have not challenged this debt in court. Should a garnishy land into the payroll department's lap to, to have it deducted? Okay, so because ideally we reach the garnishy order stage because of the matter having been taken through the courts and you having been summons to the courts, mm. but mostly this would be imposed irrespective without that having taken place. Yes, is, is that yes, correct? correct, yes. Okay, well, it's an improved situation right now, isn't it? I think definitely it, it is gives the employee, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, a a relief of sorts uh, uh, from, from the absolutely. burden of having money taken from you. I, I think it's the, it is the fact that money was just deducted from your yeah. salary, you had no choice in the matter, you could not speak up, so that excites me. And I suppose 
advice we can give is stay away from the loan sharks as far as you can. I think the, the, the main um, advice you can give is do not get into debt that you cannot repay. Nicolette, much appreciated. Thank you so and much, thank you Tim. very much. Nicolette Nicholson is the director of South African Payroll Association, and there you've got the advice. According to the Constitutional Court, Ganeshi orders have got to be signed by magistrates and not clerks in courts. But you, as an employee, please take responsibility. Be careful of the amount of debt that you accumulate over time, because obviously the burden can be felt you know, on an ongoing basis. But the courts have ruled that uh, it can only be magistrates who sign those uh, Ganeshi orders. And talk to your HR departments to familiarize yourself with this matter. Thank you.